Hello, every pony, blue devil, red devil here. And you have just caught me making the thumbnail. Which I already did. This video will be coming out tomorrow, which is Saturday. And it's a special occasion to me because. <clears throat> When I went made the thumbnail last night, <clears throat> I went and looked up when I posted the first video, just just because I wanted the thumbnail. I want I knew it was in the fall. I wanted to see if the thumbnail, see about changing the thumbnail on the same day I released it, even if it has, even if I had to make a special video. That's out of the normal loop of every Saturday. Well, weirdly enough, September 16, 2016 is when I first released the first one with John from Puma Plow. Tomorrow is September 16, 2023. It's not an even number. Well, actually it is. It's It would be episode 58. I was hoping to go to episode 60 before changing the thumbnail. But since tomorrow is a special occasion. Since it's the first video from when we started all this. And uh, we have made nowhere in that short amount of time. <clears throat> or should I say, I haven't made no progress in that length of time. Basically because stuff keeps happening. But now it's time for me to put everything back. There we go. Oh, it was going. I just can't tell. <clears throat> go put this away. And then it's time to start putting all the vehicles back. Yeah, it, it's interesting. It just seems so interesting to me of how short time is, has actually been to the length of time I've lived it from where I started this series to now. It just seems insane, but it is what it is, so. Store this back here out of the way. Okay. Let's get all this jumble mess of shit out of the way. Can I hook up to that? I brought that trailer down to be hooked up to a tractor because I was planning on hooking up one of these to these, but uh, I felt the gravity wagon would fit to that better, the feed truck. Um, but weirdly enough, no other trailer would actually fit this. And I found it a bit more easier to uh, just. That's probably the reason why I sit in there. I probably already tried that. So yeah, let's just uh, run this back up here. Yeah, let's just get rid of that. 
I don't need that. I'm pretty good when it comes to the equipment I'm pretty good right now um I would like to update but that's only based on because I struggle with doing other stuff well why don't Oh, wait, this is the one I want to bring out. I can't bring that out. I got a, I got a biscotti filled mess right here. Okay. Let's take care of this. You know what? I have, well, most of this I washed. But, uh, saving the game, quitting, coming back, and some of the stuff instantly gets dirty when you quit and relaunch the game because I don't know why but yeah it's I don't know I don't even though this game is old and the graphics aren't as good as the new stuff the, the equipment in this game isn't Uh, up to snuff as the newer stuff, but when it comes down to it, well, all the other games I play, this is the one I don't get bored playing. I can play hours in this and I'm not bored playing it. I don't know why that is, but you know what? I love it. And no matter how long it takes for me to complete this series, I'm going to complete it. I will save. Oh yeah. You know, I think it's probably going to take another year to complete it. Gravity wagons need to go in here. Well, I'm just going to. Wow, okay, this tractor doesn't have the oof to do it. <laughs> Never mind. Let's go grab the dump trailer. We're going to haul it up here. Um, yeah, I don't actually know what to say beyond I want to finish this series. It's one of my longest running series and continuously running series. And that's also, I took what, almost two year hiatus on my YouTube channel? Well, what? Okay, so I didn't truck drive for exactly two years. It's almost. I truck drive for six months the first time, quit the job because I was getting frustrated with the company, also I wasn't prepared for how truck drivers are actually treated, because after all, all the truck drivers I talk to are independent truck drivers. Or, or as they're better known as owner operators I never actually talked to a company operator so, uh, yeah my expected when it comes to truck driving was obscured 
by owner operators and how much fun they actually have compared to other people because owner operators get to make up whatever they want to do between the loads they only make money when they're doing their doing something but if they're in an area where hey there's a guy there's a there's a live band at this bar over here I can just you know take a day off go there drink that night listen to the band take the next day off and do that and that's what I'm used to hearing is the all the old op, owner operators so yeah like I said I'm getting, I'm getting off topic um I drove semi truck for six months from November 2017 which was a a year later from where I started this which is still boggles my mind I could have sworn I started this years a couple years before I started truck driving but apparently I didn't I'm just going to run this down here just for if the area needs help dealing with all the shit. And also, I don't remember, but I think I blanked the uh, silage down by 26, 27 by accident. I was driving over the top of it with the freaking... Uh, heavy track heavy crawler tractor and accidentally hit the button my bad I went to go check a menu and uh, hit the wrong button so I think it's covered up So that one's still stuck. This one can be dealt with. Go deal with this. So yeah, uh, I left the company and I pretty much was away from the company for or no, three to four months before I went back online to research companies again and I filled out what I wanted. I wanted to do flatbed OTR and I wanted to work for at least a month on the road then come back home for a bit before going back out. That's exactly what I filled out. And the third company that answered me was Western Express. If you didn't know, I worked for Western Express twice. I was hired straight on to them to do flatbed because that's what I was looking for. No other company would hire me without experience doing flatbed besides Western Express. I am grateful for them for teaching me the life lessons I need for that. But I hate their business practices because the way they actually treat drivers are as fucking atrocious. What the fuck? <laughs> Hockey. <laughs> God damn, this truck is un... Um... Let's just park it over here. Okay, and we got this truck.
Uh, this hay wagon, right. Um, I'll just leave it outside the pen there. When I get to round bales, this, this is my setup right here. I should be able to put um, three down and two up top, including, I don't think there are straps in this game. It might be. But I don't think there's straps on this, on the truck. And I don't think there's, no, there's no straps on the trailer. Yeah, trailer either. I don't know why, but I just started getting very gassy and burpy. Uh, bubbles keep pop coming back up. Um, either way, um, yeah, that's gonna be my good setup for doing flatbed. Um, yeah, so, uh, the flatbed. Uh, yes, I, Western Express hired me and I worked for them for about roughly six months. I think it was actually five months and a week, but roughly six months. Because that's how much time I had with taxes, and so that's what I'm going with. If it's not correct, then oh well. But six months worth of taxes is what I did when I did taxes the um that spring. Because I left during the fall. Yeah, I left during the fall. Oh, no. No, I got hired in the fall. I worked until about spring-ish. Then I left. And then I was home for a couple months. And then, like I said, I filled out an application for an online help. Help drivers find jobs will find companies um and yeah uh western express was the third company that offered to hire me back or well hire me to do flatbed so i talked to some of the owner operators who used to work for companies Including one of them was my uncle, who drove for, uh, fuck, um, um, oh, I forget the name of the company, damn it, um, it's, it's a very big one, though, I know that, um, I can't remember unless I look at names of companies, but, um, I worked for them for years out, out of Oklahoma and stuff like that. So. Uh, yeah, so out of talking to them All I learned was to grit my teeth and bear with it Which when I went back that's exactly what I did I says Gritted my teeth and bared with it And I was able to do that from Orchard Orchard July 2018 to um when did I leave or I didn't leave the second time um Uh, 
what did I do? When, when, when was it? I know I worked all the way through winter. Because uh, I had a horrible bug. in 2019 yeah that's weird what so the bug I got I have no idea what it was but all I remember is I went to bed Friday night in my truck uh, for New Year, right after New Year's, um, I was supposed to make, supposed to be de delivering that Monday, all I remember is I went to bed, I woke up sometime at, it was still dark out, I walked, walked from the truck, into the truck stop, went to the bathroom, Still felt like crap. Laid back down. And then got a message. Uh, sometime during the daylight. Asking me where I was. Why I wasn't making delivery. I told them what do you mean. It's only. It's only. Yeah I told them. I I. I I told them I thought it was still only uh, Saturday. Uh, no, I slept from Friday night straight into Sunday. And when I got up to go to the bathroom in the truck shop, it was Sunday. Because I asked the store owner about when I came in to grab a bottle of water and some Dr. Pepper. And they said, yes, it was Sunday when I came in. So, yeah. I slept through the entire Saturday. All Saturday. All, all the way until Sunday, early Sunday morning. Without realizing it. Oh, why am I hauling this back up here? I was just going to park this right here. Yeah, uh, I just remember that. That's it. That was an interesting experience. Um, so they let me, they were a bit upset, but, uh, when they realized, I didn't realize even what day it was because I wasn't feeling good, they kind of just told me to take as much NyQuil as you need and get sleep. And I did. I made my delivery Tuesday afternoon. Which I was not, I wasn't that far from where I had to deliver. I was only a few hours. That way. So yeah, it was, uh, it was not a good experience to lose track of how, what, how many hours you actually slept because you weren't feeling good. I don't know what I ate or what what happened to me, but I wasn't like violently ill. I just my stomach just felt bad and I just remember having a lot of heartburn <clears throat> and my stomach feeling like crap. Uh, I only figured out last year what that actually was because it happened a couple times after that too. Um, I have an issue with my gallbladder. That was the issue. My gallbladder was starting to fail. And it was, anytime I was having massive heartburn and massive pains, 
in my digestive tract, it was my gallbladder constantly getting infected because it was uh, acting up. So yeah, I could have died over the road without even realizing I was sick. Oh yeah, that that's a thing. But luckily I didn't and what really got me off the road was a few months later I came down with a uh, skin disease called cellulitis. It happened because if you sit with a job like truck driving, you sit too long. And as you sit, you pinch your leg muscles if you sit in the wrong position. And truck driving seats are not the most comfortable, especially the factory ones, which most big companies like Western Express will never put custom seats in. They will only use the factory seats and they will just order a crap ton of the factory seat, so if something goes wrong with the seat, you should replace it with a new factory seat. So, my problem came to be that, uh, as you sit for a long period of time, which I had a, I did have an issue. Um, right after winter, right after the holiday, is what called a slow period. Nothing actually happens. Uh, what I mean by that is there's no the holiday rush is done and without the holiday rush the loads that need to get done are already done. And there's a big uh, gap of Stuff that needs to be done. Or there's just not nothing there. There's no loads to actually, no pornant loads to be delivered. Everyone trying to relax until the spring, full spring thaw. So I got a bunch of. Uh, loads that were just uh, dropping hooks. Like picking up trailers for... Even though I was doing flatbed, the company had me go... company had me go to uh, Illinois to pick up a bunch of brand new box trailers for them and go deliver to an Amazon warehouse. Was it Amazon? No, it was FedEx Ground Warehouse because they had a bunch of loads that needed to be delivered. Or a bunch of stuff from FedEx that needed to be taken care of. So, They had me take brand new trailers from the company that makes box trailers and run, I think it was six or seven box trailers. And let me tell you, it takes from where that field or factory where they make, well, it's an actual field. The factory is just around the corner from the field. But they just have an entire field just filled with box trailers. Um, it's not even paved or dirt. It's just grass field. Um, now, if any other truck drivers know about it, uh, they know. So what happened was... Uh, 
Okay, so from there to where I dropped them off, it took me about... I could do two trailers in a day, is what I could... With an 11 hour period, I could do two trailers a day. So, doing six or seven, I was there for about a week doing nothing but that. And then, after that, all I was doing was Egyptian, uh, some truck drivers will understand, uh, uh, U.S. Egyptian, Gypsy, Egypt. I'm not going to say it right, drywall loads, which were simply dropping hooks. Because I showed up. I drop. I show up to the factory. Well, I show up to their field or their parking lot full of trailers. I drop the empty flatbed. I hook up to the new one. I make sure the tie downs are correct. If there's not enough tie downs, I throw more on. But it's already tarped, it's already tied down. The tarps are usually bungeed. I just need to double check everything and then go. And so I did a week of box trailers and then I did a month of nothing but that. So meaning. I was mostly sitting on my ass. I wasn't out running up and down the trailer, hauling the, doing the tarps, doing all that. It, it was just dropping hooks. And through that month and a week, I came down with cellulitis, which is uh, a thing where as you sit there, whoop, as you sit, your legs will start to swell up because all the liquid gets pumped down to your legs and then it can't get pumped back up because your legs aren't elevated including with your legs being pinched from the seat or with me being heavy set um, at the time I didn't realize it but I'm in the wrong spot uh, I was already pushing nearly six uh, 550 at the time. I didn't realize that. Well, over 550. Because when I started truck driving the first time, I was roughly 400. By the time I got cellulitis, where the legs, so the, the bottom from your knees down, fill up with liquid. And as it sits there, the liquid sits under the ground or under your skin. It bubbles. It balloons the skin. And what it does that, what it does is opens up the pores along your skin, allowing bacteria to get under the skin, with the pores being stretched open. So with the skin being, so I got what, well, like I said, cellulitis is a skin disease caused by excess fluid underneath the skin. It is painful. It's literally a disease that eats away at your flesh from just underneath outwards, and once it does that, it's it makes small rings bleed out a clear liquid which is the liquid underneath your skin and it will continue growing outwards and outwards it is disgusting so I'm not going to go into bigger details just know that uh, you can end up losing your legs by doing that well you can lose any body part that starts to get cellulitis But you can also just straight out die from it because your body 
starts trying to fight the disease and it can't beat it and you can just die from your body trying to fight the disease that's kind of how cancer works I, or how people die from cancer um, the body's trying to fight the disease that it can't win against so it puts all its effort to it that what makes the people that have cancer so weak but yeah either way um so oh. what's I uh oh yeah so I got cellulitis in my legs. I left. I went home with my from my knees down in utter pain on both legs. Um, uh, what was it? Yeah, so I came home, saw my doctor. He told me I had cellulitis bad on both legs. Which I couldn't see where the cellulitis hit me is um just below my ankle on my right leg and just below or just above my ankle on my right leg and just below my knee on my left leg. I noticed the issue on my right leg, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't getting to the point where it was where I thought I needed uh, antibiotics yet. I because every time I washed up which with a truck driver uh with uh flying J and pilot you can get plenty of showers constantly which I did. I would spend a, a good amount of time in the shower just because the hot water felt so good after so many hours being on the road. Yeah, so, uh... Um... So, yeah, the doctor told me to take some antibiotics and told me to put my feet up for a week. This is where it got kind of weird because even though the doctor told me to put my feet up for a week, he wouldn't write me a thing to give me, give to my company to tell me to tell them that I need to be uh, out of work for a while. Why he wouldn't give it to give that to me, I do not understand even to this day. But, um, at the end of the day, the company got mad at me because I couldn't give them a, a, a piece of paper from my doctor saying I needed to stay home or end up being worse off. And I had an argument with my, uh, dispatcher, which... We got that settled, uh, that argument settled out, and I told them, look, I don't care, I'm taking a week, when I'm done with the week, and my antibiotics is gone, I will give you a call, and you tell me where to pick up a truck to, and my dispatcher said, that's fine. said fine we'd rather have you we'd rather have you healthy and driving than sick and driving okay so a week go by I give them a call the person on the phone told me what are you talking about you quit that's when I knew my company fired me 
by having me quit, which is illegal, by the way. They can't have, they can't just write down that you quit when you have, when you never did. But in order to prove that, you would have to go to court, which I could have won because I put in the the computer in the truck I even put I'll see you in a week or when I took the truck back to the shop and to before the week before the week started I took the truck back and came home which is down in Pennsylvania I live in upper up uh, western New York they're down in uh, eastern Pennsylvania Eastern Southern Pennsylvania. I live in the northwest corner of New York. So it was almost a. It was several hours. Uh, it was a day. Let's just say that. It was a day to deal with that. I drive down there and someone follow me just to come all the way back home. But that was the agreement. They didn't want the truck sitting around forever. But they also know that uh, I was sick. And I didn't want to drive home. But uh, drive the truck back. But I had no choice. It was that or be charged for stealing the truck. Yay. Great company policy there. Now, oh, great. There we go. But, uh, either way. I was able to get the tr truck there. I took a picture. I sent them a message on the Quadcom. I even sent a text to my dispatcher going, the truck is here. Look at it. I'll see you in a week. I did that on both. And like I said, when I went back or called them the week later to see about finding a abandoned truck if there's any near me or see if another driver could pick me up on the way through here before heading down to uh, Pennsylvania or if I have to catch a Greyhound to Pennsylvania. And when I was told I was, I quit. I just laughed at the person and said no you guys just fired me and just hung up and never talked to them again um which is funny because uh, about a month after that call I got a call from Western which was their uh, paycheck department Asking me, uh, you realize, uh, call, they called me to inform me that the only way I could get paid if I work. And I had to tell the person that I'm not with the company anymore. That's how fucked up the company is. The paycheck people thought I was still on the payroll. When clearly they fired me already. The company wasn't even communicating with each other. Which I found that out multiple times, by the way. Every time I broke down and called my, or contact my dispatcher for help, who's supposed to contact the garage, to, so the garage can then contact me to help me out. Dispatcher never did it. So I ended up contacting the garage myself anyways, which you're not supposed to. Because the garage doesn't want to deal with every single headache call that a driver might need. But, uh, anyway. I left... I don't even know how I got on this subject, but, uh, either way. Um. 
That's right. I worked for Western Express the second time, but I worked for Western Express for roughly, like I said, five. You know, it wasn't five months the first time. It was. I think it was only four months. Because I got rehired on 4th of July because 4th of July 20, 2018, that's when I was sitting at the uh, Pennsylvania uh, hotel waiting for another truck driver trainer to come pick me up. So I spent two different holidays at that hotel. I spent Thanksgiving the first year because waiting for a driver to come pick me up. And second year, I spent 4th of July by myself. That's because of my weight. Most trainers would show up, look at me, and go, no. Because I had one trainer that was absolutely capable of getting on the top bunk with ease. No issues whatsoever. He looked at me and goes, can you get to the top bunk? I said, probably not. And even if I got up there, the top bunk is only rated for 300 pounds. I knew for a fact I was 400. Well, that was the first time. He had me try to get up to the top bunk. And when I failed multiple times, he kicked me out of his truck and left. He didn't even tell the company that he wasn't taking me. He just left. And when the company saw me the next day, they asked where I, why I wasn't with my trainer. And I told him he kicked me out of his truck and left. Well, I ended up with a with a uh, truck driver from uh, South Carolina, which oh, I forget his name. His name is a not a typical name. Let's just say he. he he is black, and the name wasn't a typical way to say it. It was a typical name, but he didn't have you say it the typical way. It, it had a weird way of saying it. I think I just always call, just call him Titus, or something like that, but... Uh, he never liked the way I said his name. Never. Because he always complained about me not saying it correctly. But I learned a lot from him. And I am grateful that he taught me how to drive truck and operate a flatbed. So, yeah, even though he did do uh, some questionable things nothing illegal mind you it's more of a oh he did the typical modern American thing of, I don't give a crap I'm doing this like a parking lot that has a weight limit we still parked in the parking lot to go to a restaurant to order food which I couldn't order there because I was too broke to do so. And forever for... And, and also you could tell he was from the south because uh, he absolutely hated snow. If we were going to a location or if we were getting a run and it was heading north during the winter 
and there was snow, he would just cancel it right away. He said, nope. And that's one of the biggest arguments we ever actually had when I was learning to truck drive from him is we were heading into uh, Colorado during in December because I drove I drove with him for a month God that, that tractor just keeps going doesn't it so I drove with him for a month but uh, one of the things we did when um, so we're driving he drove through Kansas or halfway through he drove from one place to a I forget where we picked it up but we drove up into Kansas and he had me switch with him in Kansas before going into uh, Colorado and he told me if it starts snowing pull over immediately he doesn't want to die while sleeping which fine by me I'd rather die unaware than die looking at it but yeah whatever but since I'm from Western New York, I deal with snow all the time. Well, not all the time. Every year. I grew up with it. I understand how it works and how to drive in it. So, when I start stalling, oh, it's just light flakes of snow on the road, just lightly getting dusted. I was like, yeah, this is fine. And continued driving. Oh boy. The earful I got when he woke up and saw it was snowing and, and the amount of times he told me to just pull over and I wouldn't. I listened to him berate me for a good while before I just straight out told him, look. Oh, his name's not Titus. Uh, see, his name was, see, I kept calling him Curtis. From the music, or from the music, Curtis Lowe. But his name wasn't Curtis, it was... It... Eh. See, he would pronounce it, but all I heard was Curtis. I yelled at him, go, look, Curtis. I'm from the north. The snow is my friend. I'm driving, so shut up, watch. And that's exactly what he did. He... He turned around, or he turned in the passenger seat, looked forward, buckled in, and went quiet. He went through his entire pack while he had left of cigarettes. In the three hours I continued driving, <laughs> mind you, <laughs> which he complained because I made him waste cigarettes because of how nervous he was. <laughs> but yeah. Um, no, he, we got to the truck stop he had marked on the computer. And we got there with no incident, well, almost no incident. Uh, we were coming down the hill and we started gaining speed. And we didn't have a heavy load. But, uh, all I did was re put the trailer brakes on. Or engage the trailer brake slightly, which pulled the trailer back in place. And slowed down some, and we were fine. But we got there, and he just... He didn't say anything for a good bit. And then he just turned, looked at me, and goes, You know, I don't... No one has ever yelled at me about shut up and sit there. But you handled yourself well. And you proved to me that you can handle yourself out here doing this job. 
Just don't fucking do it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much just don't yell. Uh, don't ever yell at him again. <laughs> but yeah. So, got through that incident, so that's fine. So yeah, it was uh, my second driver, I don't remember, my second trainer, I don't even remember his fucking name, and to be honest, he gave me the vibe of I don't fucking care, because he's one of the drivers, he's the type of driver that I fucking absolutely hate, um, when we were driving, even though, yes, he was paying fully attention to the road, he would sometimes put his feet up onto the dash. He would put one foot up on the dash. Just to stretch out his feet. Or put his other foot up onto the passenger seat. He would, uh... And he would always, always have his phone clipped to the air vent of the truck instead of up on the dash. So it would be down low. So he could watch stuff on Hulu. And that's what I hate. If you're going to drive, pay fully 100% to what the hell you're doing. But, I only had to be with him for a week, so, I didn't complain. I just dealt with it, even though I fucking hate his methods, and how he fucking drove. Which I only ran into him once. Once I got my own truck after him. And then the next time, I ran into him twice, actually. The first time, I ran into him at the at Western Express main headquarter in Nashville. Um, and then I ran into him again, and he was working for another company. As he put it, they fired him. Which, he probably did something to deserve being fired, but, uh, but not my place to complain. Like I said, he had the, he gave off the vibe of don't give a shit. And, the only we did get in we did bet our butt heads a couple times um once was when we were backing off at a we're at this we're picking up some metal uh corrugated steel for uh underground uh, like the tunnels that go under roads and stuff the corrugated steel that the cement gets poured on top. Um, we're in that spot and they had us back into this very tight, horrible spot in the back so they could load it. And I had him in the passenger seat telling me what to do. I had the person outside on the forklift telling me what to do. And they were both just constantly talking, talking, talking over each other. And I just simply just, I snapped and told them, told everyone to shut, shut the fuck up for a minute so I could focus. I can't hear myself think. Oh, he did not like that at all. He got extremely mad at me for that. 
but it's like I had two people yelling either side of me and telling me two different things while I was trying to run what I needed to do in my head and it just got to the point where everyone just needed to shut the fuck up for a minute <laughs> and let me try to figure it out on my own because um, I'm not a good person when it comes to someone just telling me how to do it show me and then I can copy you. I'm a very good person when it comes to copying someone else how someone did it. I can see someone do it and redo that with ease. The second time is uh, where Uh, I, can't, I can't remember where we were, but we were trapping a trailer, and he didn't like the way I was trapping it down, even though I was doing exactly how the company taught me to do it. And I told him, look, I'm going to do it this way because this is the way the company taught me to do it. And he got extremely mad to the point where he undid the trap after I walked away and had me stand there while he redid it his way. Which, either way, it could have got done and we could have left. But he had me stand there and watch him do the way he did it. Which just wasted time. Which I... I have a brother, an older brother, that's the same way. I know how to deal with it. The way you deal with people like that is you just shut up, you let them do their thing, and then when they're done, just ignore them. Act like you're listening, and then just do your own thing anyways. And if they complain, just go, I'm sorry, it didn't click on me. But this, I know this way, so I'm going to do this. Because it feels comfortable to me. It's so... Oh, but... Yeah, I had an amazing time truck driving the second time. Mainly because I learned to... Put my head down, hit the grindstone, and deal with the stupidity that is the companies you work for. But yeah. Or also the reason why I'm doing this is I do believe the first episode with John I did was... Um, we just, um, I don't exactly remember what we did. I can't remember if we hauled equipment back to the farm from the dealership. Or did we just go straight into farming? I think we just went straight into farming. I'm not 100% sure on it, but either way, it was fun. But I'm just going down memory lane while I get this done. Because to be honest, that whole try of truck driving for almost two years. So, let's see. I started in 2016. I was only able to do this because I was able to get a job delivering penny savers. Um, in the beginning of 2015. So I was able to finally build my dream computer. Which turned out to be another nightmare altogether. But, uh... Ooh about that some other day uh, 
Oh, I didn't realize that was even fucking running. Okay. I was able to get my first computer. Well, it's second computer, but the last one was a hob job of a old Walmart computer that I barely could keep running properly. Which I do believe I still have that somewhere. To be honest, what I did was I took two computers. One was a Windows Vista, one was a Windows XP, and I took the two computers. One of them fell off the desk and quit working. But I was able to take parts from the other computer and get that one working. Which it used Windows Vista while it was, while it was operating. So I was able to use that to make my first recordings, which I used to use, uh, Fraps, Fraps 60 or something like that, which if you didn't buy the license fee, it would just kind of, a little watermark at the top of the screen would always be there, because they had no issue y you using their software to record videos. Because it gave them free advertising because of the little watermark. And if you paid for it, well, you paid for it. Which I eventually did pay for it. But once I learn about, which is funny because my dad bought, paid for it for me. Because I didn't have the full amount of money yet for it. Because I think it was $60, and at the time I was making only $35 a week. And I still had to pay for gas every week to do the penny saver route, so, yeah. Um... Uh, I was able to set it up. I My dad paid for it. I set it up. And I used it to make a couple recordings. Without having the. Uh, watermark there. And I think. With only. With only two days. After paying for it. I found out about OBS. Which is open open broadcast software which is 100% free and is better than traps in every way I don't even know if fraps is even still around these days Yeah. <coughs> I don't even know if people still use wraps or not. the grass hasn't grown enough to be damaged from me riding over it. That's also the reason why I picked that corner of the field. Uh, because nothing would get damaged from doing it. My plan was to do it up on uh,
put the camera in the about where that five on the 25 is and place the stuff down where the corner of 25 and 23 and the road meets but uh, we got to the point where it was dark and I had to fast forward and uh, other plants popped up So next week, uh, harvest and uh, planting and uh, harvesting. Did I say harvesting and plant? Harvesting and selling. Yeah. I'll try to have everything spelled. And I want to look at the first round baler and the, uh, well, the cheapest round baler I have on here. And the, uh, thing to replace that grass collector. So I can finally... everything away. Put everything away, close every door. Yeah, it'll make collecting grass or silage faster. Let's see. Use the mouse a little faster. So, um, I think it's here. That's the one I own. Yes, this one. So it's 26. I could technically buy it now. But the thing is, it comes with several heads. Which, if I mow the grass and rake it, I can do that. I can even do it with, uh, 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 with straw. This one allows me to just go straight through the field and harvest everything. I can even use it to harvest grass completely. And this one just does corn. So I can do this and I can harvest, uh, I can harvest the crop while it's up. So I can harvest, uh, wheat, barley, and granola while standing. To make silage with or well complete chop feed is i think the technical term for it is where you wait for the plant to get fully grown with a head of right before you try to get it right before the plant would start dropping its the seed and then you harvest it that way harvest it while it's standing while it's at its peak ripeness and then you throw it into a silo and then feed it as like that it's just if i buy that i won't be able to buy the head that is the so expensive um let's see baylor baylor let me see, what, what else can I buy? Um, I like to finally upgrade to bigger tractors. But I also want to try some of these track tractors out a little bit. Horse, 65 horse, 60. 90 horse, 75 horse. This doesn't say. 
Give me five. Give me five. 175. 90. Then I got these. I want I really want to get this because this would be the first tractor that's massive and I got this which this doesn't tell me how much horsepower it has I got this mm. loaders are fine the trucks um I want to get these trucks. I also want to try testing out some of the other trucks. Um, I want to get this because it comes with a uh, a like a grain thing you could put on the field, fill it up, and then this thing comes through. Those come down, hook to it, and pick it back up and put it on the back of the truck. Um, I would like to try that out. We already seen all this. And the same with that. Uh, don't need that. Um, I do have this. Um, I do not remember if you need to buy this to go with it. Because I don't know if that picks, cuts the thing at the same time while it's picking it. Um, <clears throat> we'll figure that one out. Oh, uh, let's see. Then I got a new dump wagon I want to try out. Oh, right here. See that? I think that's less than what this is. That's... Oh, no, that's 10,000. Well, that's more than all my trailers, I think. Yeah. I need to get this so I can haul milk. I need the milk trailer. Um, plows I think I'm good with. I don't know. I don't remember which plows I actually own anymore. Apparently, I don't own any. I got the other this system I like to try out. Well, not that stuff. But I like to get this. But I do believe this needs a high amount of horsepower to run. Different planters. I want to be able to use this because it's very wide. Mower. I do have another mower. Okay. <laughs> different rake. Oh, right, that's a tenor. I got different rakes. I got those two. Tailors, here we go. Um. I got this one, which is a thousand. And it does not tell me what the size bale it makes. Okay, no mind it's down here. 1.6 round bale. Uh, maximum work speed is 15... Kilometer plus power diameter. And this one doesn't tell me anything. <clears throat> oh, oopsie. I think what I'm going to do. I'm just going to buy this first. And then once I finally decide to get rid of 
the stuff or if I feel like starting round bales for grass I'll grab that but uh, yeah An hour and 20 minutes and now I need to go watch it all but yeah and since I had the money I am going to go back and I'm going to buy that harvester. Just because I have the money, might as well. No, I was going to drive it back, then I realized I need to leave it here, because... Once I buy the head, I would have to drive it all the way back down here anyways. So... Next time. Selling. Again. Uh... So the barley's all gone. Still got a good amount of wheat, granola, and corn to do. Yeah. Oh. That's for next time. Yeah. I have been Blue Devil Red Devil, and I will see you all in hell. And thank you for those who stuck with me for all these years, and those who are just learning of my channel. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. And we are getting closer to 100 subscribers. 100 subscribers. That's right. Words. Words, you mean? Words, they mean something. Um. I don't know how, but I'd like to do something special. I have an idea for a 100 subscriber special. But, uh, I'll f have to figure out beforehand. So, like I said, I am Blue Devil Red Devil. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in hell. See ya.